Hello everyone, I'm Darcy Bono, and according to Warhammer Community, the return of the Old World is quickly approaching. They mentioned several articles ago that the Old World was going to be released in early 2024, so I figured now would be a good time to share with you how to paint the Tomb Kings. They are very near and dear to my heart because they were almost my first army back in 2004. I actually ended up going with the Lizardmen because dinosaurs, come on, but I'm still very excited to see the return of the Tomb Kings. I just want to emphasize that this is not one of the new Old World models. This is a Tomb guard from 2010. He's actually slightly kitbashed because the only thing cooler than one kopesh is two kopeshes. Anyway, enough fangirling over Egyptian mummies, let's get started. Now this is a very detailed model, but we can very quickly and efficiently take care of all of these details using contrast paints, and I want my colors to be very vibrant, so for that reason I've primed my model white using white scar spray, but feel free to use any white primer you like. So the first thing we're going to do is take care of our dark surfaces first. The reason we're doing this is so we don't run the risk of getting a dark paint on our lighter surfaces later, as that's much more difficult to clean up. So that being said, we're actually going to be painting the bone surfaces dead last, pun intended. So if you're only interested in seeing that, I have this broken down into chapters. Feel free to skip ahead. But for now, we're just painting our darkest colors. So I'm going to show you two different ways you can do your wraps. If you'd like more of a brown color, you can use Rattling Grime straight from the pot. This is a slight grayish brown that just gives you a warmer color wrapping that's gonna set this apart from your lighter yellow bone. Here's a better shot to show you just how brown this is. If you want it to be a little less saturated, just use a little bit of Lamian Medium in there to desaturate it so the light under layer shows through. Alternatively, if you'd like more of a gray color to your wraps, you can use Basilicanum Gray. This is also applied just straight from the pot. And again, if you'd like a slightly lighter gray, you can cause that brighter under layer to show through by mixing in a tiny bit of Lamian Medium. Now, some of you might be wondering, can I just use Nuln Oil on this instead? And the answer is yes, you can do whatever you want, but I personally avoid the Citadel shades when doing speed paints, mainly because I don't think they saturate the model nearly enough. They kind of just flow into the recesses and leave the surfaces mostly white. Here's an example of a skull painted in Nuln Oil. As you can see, it's mostly just the recesses that are heavily tinted. And I also noticed that they leave a very obvious shine to the surface. So for that reason, I prefer Basilicanum Gray for my mummy wrappings as it provides more color, as well as avoiding that glossy coat, which ancient fabric shouldn't have. So just apply either Rattling Grime or Basilicanum Gray to your mummy wraps and we'll move on. So after one coat of your contrast paint of choice, your wraps should look something like this. As you can see, the Rattling Grime is much more brown than the lighter, more neutral Basilicanum Gray. What we're going to do next is paint the sword blades because we're going to be base coating these in black. We don't want to get black on our nice gold or bone or any pretty Egyptian colors later, so we're going to do these next. Go ahead and base coat your swords in any black you want. I'm using Black Legion. We're going to be doing some stippling over this so it doesn't even need to be fully opaque, it just needs to be dark. While I wait for the Black Legion base coat to dry, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the straps on the armor using Black Templar. You can definitely use Black Legion if you don't want to buy another black paint, but the main reason I chose Black Templar for those straps is that it actually does provide a bit more contrast. It is a more transparent paint, so the edges of whatever you apply it to look highlighted once you apply it, whereas with Black Legion, it's just an opaque base coat. Black Templar is also a much cooler, greener black, which will then contrast nicely with the warmer bone and and gold tones we're gonna later have on this model. Another thing I can do while I wait for the black base coat to dry is go ahead and take care of the fabric. In this case, I'm going to have it a nice Egyptian blue, and for that, I'm using Achillean Green Contrast. This is essentially just the contrast version of Thousand Suns Blue. It's just a pretty Egyptian green-blue color. If you're applying this to a larger surface, I highly recommend using contrast medium in it. It just helps it spread more evenly, so it's not deeply saturating one particular area. But for the Tomb Kings, they really don't have that much fabric on them, so I'm just using a Killian Green straight from the pot. Next, we're going to take care of all of our metallic surfaces using Vallejo Game Air Silver. If you don't have this, you can use any bright silver. I just love this one because it's incredibly thin, but provides absolutely amazing coverage for how thin it is. 
and I'm not applying this with an airbrush. Absolutely just brush paint this on anywhere that's going to be a metallic surface. For now, I'm applying it anywhere that's gonna be gold armor and I'm even gonna put it on his shins because I want that to be a cool metallic blue later. I'm not going to put it on the swords just yet. We're gonna do a stippling technique so they have a more rugged ancient appearance. But for now, base coat anywhere that's gonna be a metallic surface with a bright silver. To do stippling on something this small, I use a small ELF concealer brush. This is a makeup brush you can get for $2 in basically any big box store that sells makeup. The rounded tip is going to provide us with a more circular kind of gradient to our paint application. If you've never done stippling before, all it is is the cousin of dry brushing. Get most of the paint off your brush and then test your pattern on another surface before applying it to your miniature. And in order to apply it to your miniature, all you're going to do is just lightly jab the surface with the tip of your brush. Rush. Alternatively, if you're applying this on anything with an edge that actually has texture, the one side of the sword was completely flat and this one actually has a beveled edge. If you want, you can do just traditional dry brushing. Again, this rounded tip is great for giving a natural gradient to your dry brushing. So just build up this silver layer a little bit. You don't want it too bright and shiny. We are going to be applying a glaze to it to dull it down later. So if you overdo it, don't worry. We're going to make it look a little more ancient in the next step. This next part is completely optional. All I'm doing is applying a glaze of Black Templar and Lamian Medium mixed in an even ratio. I'm just applying this thin glaze over the flats of the sword just to provide a bit more contrast. At the moment, it looks like it's totally oversaturated the speckled underlayer, but once it dries, you'll still have that rugged metallic patterns showing through. And if you do oversaturate, you can always immediately rinse your brush and apply just straight Lamian Medium to the surface to disperse that Black Templar if you do oversaturate saturate your metal. To make the blade look a little more weathered without being totally rusted, I'm just going to apply another thin glaze, this time using Rattling Grime and Lamian Medium, again mixed in an even ratio. Just apply this over the entire blade. This will again darken the dark part and make the brightest part be tinged with a slight brown hue. To add a little bit more definition to the blades, I'm going to add a fine edge highlight using Iron Hand Steel. If you don't want to buy this, you can always mix in Rattling Grime into a drop of your original silver that will also make a warm steel color. So just apply this final highlight to all of the blade edges. In order to keep this a more rugged look, don't do this highlight in one big swipe. Do it how we did with the stippling where you lightly pat the miniature with each brush stroke. All right, now on to one of the most useful mixtures when painting a Tomb King's army. Here's how to paint gold. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. If you want a more ancient, kind of dingier looking gold, just mix two drops snake bite leather, one drop Saigor Brown, one drop Lamian Medium, and then apply that mixture over your silver surfaces. And you can vary the result just by how much paint you put on your brush. If you want this to look more of a dingy brown gold, then definitely saturate your surface. If you want it to be a more vibrant gold, but still have those brown undertones, then don't saturate your brush as much and apply this more thinly. So I'm going to coat all of the scale armor in this gold, and then we'll move on to a more vibrant gold for the accessories. For a vibrant, more resplendent gold, we're going to mix two drops of Gilliman Flesh Contrast with one drop of Snakebite Leather Contrast and apply that over our silver. As you can see, this is a lighter, slightly more yellow gold, and this will become more obvious as I put it on the larger surfaces. And as I mentioned before, if you're putting this over large flat surfaces like the border on his hat, make sure to use a little bit of Lamian Medium. I honestly will dip my brush in the gold mixture, then dip it slightly into a dot of Lamian Medium, and then just swipe that over the helmet. This will allow the paint to spread more smoothly instead of congealing on one particular spot. 
Next, I'm just going to quickly take care of a few red accents on this miniature. I'm going to use a mix of Flesh Terrors Red and Lamian Medium mixed in an even ratio and just lightly apply that to the surface. And applying this less is more because it tends to oversaturate, especially small areas, and you don't want to have very obvious blotches. So apply it thinly at first, and you can always go back over later if it's not quite as intense as you'd like it. Just keep in mind if you do apply a second coat over the silver, you're going to lose that metallic surface a bit more, so you may want to thin this Flesh Terrors Red even more using Lamian Medium if you want to retain that metallic look. Next, I'm going to go in and do the exact same thing, this time with Black Templar. Now, I should have done this first, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. You should always do your dark colors first, so I'm going to have to be careful not to get this on the red. So, moral of the story, pay attention to what you're doing. Next, we're going to make his shin guards look really cool by using a Killian green straight from the pot over the silver. This results in this very nice metallic blue. One thing of note is to keep an eye on pooling. This is a vertical surface, meaning gravity is going to pull your paint downwards. You can mitigate this by keeping the model horizontal or just keeping the paint moving, smoothing it out evenly and not applying too much at once. Just to add a bit of pizzazz to the model, I'm going to make the inlay of this sword a little interesting. All I'm going to do is apply Scorpion Green straight from the pot. It's a contrast paint that's very bright but also transparent. And then I'm going to immediately apply a Killian Green at the bottom of that. The blue will run into the yellow green and create an emerald green transition. It looks pretty neat and is very easy to do. All right, here we are at the final step. We're finally going to do the bone. Now, my bone recipe is super simple. Again, I don't use Null Oil. I don't use Agrax Earthshade. I don't think either one of those looks anything like bone. What I do use is Skeleton Horde Contrast mixed with Basilicanum Gray, and the ratio is going to vary depending on how yellow you want your bone. And I'll do a quick demonstration using this amazing piece from the original Casket of Souls. For a more yellowed bone, you're going to want to use more Skeleton Horde Contrast. This is a mix of four drops Skeleton Horde with one drop Basilicanum Gray and two drops of Lamian Medium for additional transparency. As you can see, it's a nice yellow bone color, but I won't be using this just because we have a lot of gold on our miniature already. What I like to use for a more neutral bone color without being fully gray is just one less drop of Skeleton Horde. So three drops of Skeleton Horde, one drop of Silicanum Gray, two drops of Lamian Medium, and you get a more ivory color. And if you do want a more gray tone to your bone, you can use just straight Basilicanum Gray mixed with three drops of Lamian Medium. We're using more Lamian Medium in this case because by itself, Basilicanum Gray is still very dense and we want that light under layer to show through. So again, back to our Tomb Guard, we're going to be doing the middle of the road option, which is the three drop Skeleton Horde, one drop Basilicanum Gray, two drops Lamian Medium, and just spreading that mixture all over the bones. And these bones are fairly textured, so you really don't even need to be very careful with this. It sinks into the recesses nicely while still tinting the raised portions in our nice ivory bone color. Personally, I like this as a one and done recipe for bone. If you would like, you can highlight the raised portions, maybe around the face and like the eye sockets with something like wraith bone for a brighter ivory. But if you've got a whole army full of skeletons to paint, this is a very efficient way of going about it. So that is how you paint the Tomb Kings in very little time with minimal effort. I went ahead and based this guy on a round base because I plan on using him in a Gravelord's Warcry Warband that I will be taking to Adepticon. So heretically, he is not on a square base. But that being said, you can look forward to a tutorial on desert basing and painting sandstone in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, do all the things to praise the almighty algorithm. And if you really enjoyed it and want to support the production of more free tutorials, you can go shopping at any of the affiliate links in the video description. So thanks very much for joining me, and until we meet again, happy painting everyone!